This is The Muse, a voice in the background session, spoken by Ellsworth. This session can be listened to at any time, doing just about anything. It's not hypnosis, it's closeness. This session is dedicated to the muse. My muse. It is the person who is sitting on the park bench, journal open, pen scribbling, madly writing down whatever thought they must get on paper now. It's also the person who is merely sitting, watching the lake, watching the swans, their thoughts, or perhaps no thoughts, kept in their mind. They're not looking at a phone, they're not listening to a podcast, they're not writing, talking, anything. Simply being, being still. The muse is also the man who walks into the cafe. Messenger bag slung over his shoulder. Distracted, drops his keys, picks them up, realizes his shoe's untied, and he fixes it. He's a chaotic mix of mundane, these little actions, but somehow for this man, all of them are happening at the same time. Perhaps even his phone decides to ring. And the person behind the counter says, Next! This man, this disheveled man trying to keep it together and totally now unaware that he's being watched because he's so busy putting himself back together. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe this mix of everything happening to him at once makes him think that all eyes in the room are on him. Yet, I suspect that most of the eyes are just half-heartedly looking or thinking, glad I'm not him, but not me. I'm watching him. I'm curious. I'm curious if one of these things will be that proverbial straw. I'm wondering, as all of these things happen, as he appears to be late, the shoe one to hide, the key is dropped, and so on, I'm wondering what face and voice he's going to present to the person behind the counter. And now you're wondering too. You're wondering what you would do. Would you be short? Would you be apologetic? Would you be blushing? Would you happen to glance a little to the right and see the woman who's watching you? I'm not judging, I'm merely curious, that's all. So let's go back to the gentleman, furiously scribbling along in that journal. And let's eavesdrop for a moment and let's see what he's writing. I know what it is. Because eventually he sent it to me. So, do you have time to hear about a coin mishap? If you do, 
I'm usually pretty good at my coin management. I tend to feel confident that she is where she's meant to be. In my pocket or under my pillow. Oh, how pride comes before mistress knocks you down from the crow's nest to the sea. In the middle of the night, I heard a chink sound. My heart sank. I thought that's my coin falling down the back of the bed. My hand searched under my pillow. Sure enough, she was not there. I should perhaps have got up found her and restored her to her proper place. But I also knew that the process would properly wake me up and I needed my sleep. I would leave her until the morning. In the morning, she was my first thought. I lay on the floor, reaching under the bed. No sign. Under my bed, there is another bed. I pulled that out. Still, no sign. I took off the duvet and pillow, the mattress, the mattress on the other bed, and still no sign. There are horizontal slats on which the mattress rests. I took them all off both beds. Nothing. This was between 5.30 a.m. and 6 a.m. I was being a little noisy. I realized that if anyone came into my room as well they might, they would fear for the state of my mind. They would expect me to start writing cryptic formulae and esoteric quotes on the wall, along with hieroglyphs and drawings of aliens. I could tell you how I had removed all the furniture, pulled up all the carpet, levered up the floorboards, and started ripping off the wallpaper, but that would be exaggerating. And you know I would never do that. Actually, there is no wallpaper. I gave up and put everything back. I felt sad. I've grown to treasure and love that coin. I could just choose another one. No, it would not be the same. Was it a sign that I did not belong in my mistress's collection? I thought Mistress would tell me to squidge that thought under the carpet straight away, so I did. I went downstairs, had a cup of tea, then thought, no, she must be somewhere. So I went back into my room and dismantled everything again. Still no sign. I decided that she had actually vanished. That she was now in another universe, somewhere in the multiverse. I walked past the bathroom and there on the floor was my coin. I'm sure there was a twinkle in the eye of the face on the head. I think maybe I could even hear a tinkling laugh. I don't know what the chink sound was in the night. Just a strange coincidence. I suppose my coin had accompanied me on a nighttime trip to the loo. But I also wonder if you've infused her with your mischievous, whimsical life and are just determined to create chaos for me again. I would not want it any other way. And now, let's turn our attention back to the one who was just staring at the water appearing maybe to be relaxed, but I promise you he was not. Instead, he was puzzling over an invitation of sorts to figure out a puzzle, a poet in the making. Oh, and he was not alone. It appears that the benches in the park were full of poets in the making. Let's look at one of them. Let's see, perhaps, if they have gone from storing it in their head to jotting it down. Oh, this one has. Let's read it. Should I come with half a dozen tulips? Would she prefer a sweet, fragrant nectar? 
Though still so much I know not of Empress, yet so much of me she knows and touches, as intimately as long-time lovers. I should read Wikipedia, Willows. As deep and wide as the roots of the willows, and I learn of the allergens and tulips. Their lack of scent may disappoint lovers as bees pass over their absent nectar, and doggo may fall ill from its touches. But they are the favorite flowers of Empress. I want to follow the call of Empress as bees follow the promise of willows. The eyes flutter when her soft voice touches the mind wanders rainbow garden tulips. The bees know where to find the first nectar. Will I know for the first time like lovers? The tenderness and passion of lovers, the warm embrace and power of empress, the catkins like modest homes of nectar, open orange or purple on willows. Like the opposite of the chaste tulips, like a sad man's longing for her touches. Her voice is all she needs when she touches, and I feel like absent-minded lovers, far away from fleeting thoughts of tulips, only knowing I belong to Empress. And like the catkins offer from willows, my flower offers creative nectar. I freely give to Els with her nectar, her pleasure tingles and her praise touches. Her seeds now rival the strength of willows, her words commanding the heart of lovers. I fall in love at the feet of Empress, I become one with the blissful tulips. Given thy nectar joining the tulips, hearing her touches, worshipping Empress deeper than willows, I love like lovers. And our wonderful trip around as we admire all of these muses and all of these places. It takes us to a nice, quiet bookstore. A little chilly because it appears we've ended up in British Columbia. Who knew? We skip continents. But this admirer, this quiet man, he stood there making notes. No, not in a journal on this one. He's being a true masochist and he's typing it in with his thumbs. Silly, silly man. Shall we read his as well? I know. You know we're going to. The garden is radiant with tulips, as honeybees work feverishly for nectar. I sit, peacefully listening to Empress, my landscaping idol, awaiting finishing touches, while summer sun summons hungry lovers and gentle breezes rustle the willows. Crows chasing squirrels in the willows, lovely scents emanating from the tulips. Neighbors radio playing something about lovers, fleeting thoughts about tasting sweet nectar. A finch bites fruit to touches, yet my attention turns to Empress. Oh, she is powerful, this empress. I stare hypnotically at the willows, her words as strong as touches, yet soothing like the gentle tulips, while my beverage yearns for nectar, and robins call for lovers. Hot August nights beckon thirsty lovers, yet none as alluring as empress. Her voice is the sweetest nectar. Gentle yet strong as a willow, as comfortable as tiptoes through tulips, enticing all the minds she touches. 
Supple minds await her gentle touches. No time for haters, only lovers. Powerful words from her soft tulips. Isn't he a clever man? A yearning to listen to Empress while resting under the peaceful willows. Sipping tea sweetened with honey nectar. Yes, sugar in tea or nectar. A cookie, the cup it touches. The squirrel envious from the willows. People I know are tea lovers, selective about her coffee as empress. She creates while admiring the tulips. Sweet nectar alluring to her lovers touches to the voice of empress under the willows picturing the tulips. This same wonderful muse has told me how he has listened again and again to the collector's public invitation and I find it so amusing to know that he's tempted. Yet for now, he's choosing to be a quiet admirer in the background. And now our travels take us somewhere else, to this place that's full of mist, fog. And even if you hold your hand just a short distance from your face, it's still tricky to see. That's how thick the atmosphere has become around us. Why? Well, this particular muse, this wonderful muse, who was walking with me for quite a bit of my early journey, this muse who blushed when I called him out or complimented him. This muse currently appears to be lost. So it's only fitting that his words come to us through this fog and through this mist, walking alone among the tulips and roses and orchids, such nectar. A garden worthy of an empress, a breeze that cools all that it touches, a full moon made for lovers, shining through the branches of the willows. The breeze rustles the leaves of the willows and flutters the petals of the tulips. And for the lovers of roses and those orchid lovers, fills the night with the smell of sweet nectar and fills the hearts of all that it touches. Lords and ladies, kings and queens, emperor and empress. In this garden for a queen, a realm for an empress, surrounded by pines, by oaks, and by willows, that brings joy to they that see. He who breathes, she who touches, and delights in the orchids, the roses, and tulips, the joys of the breeze, the moon, and the nectar. Surely a place to be frequented by lovers. But on this night, where are the lovers? Where is its queen? Whither its empress? Will there be no one to sample its nectar, to feel the breeze as it blows through the tulips? To marvel at the beautiful sight of the willows, to delight in these sights, sounds, smells, and touches. There is one who is dear, there is one my heart touches that makes me dream of that one day we'll be lovers. One day we'll share roses and orchids and tulips. This will be her empire. She will be its empress. 
her realm, from the pines to the oaks to the willows, her spirit of breezes and moonlight and nectar. But wait, what is that aroma sweeter than nectar? A warmth that brings pleasure to all that it touches, majestic as oaks, yet as slender as willows. A bringer of dreams an inspiration to trance lovers. My mistress, my queen, my goddess, my empress, the tender of my rainbow garden of tulips. Sweeter than nectar, lovelier than tulips. She touches my heart, my fair garden empress, the elf of the willows. Perhaps tonight, We'll be lovers. I can imagine the image of a gazebo placed in the midst of these wonderful gardens that have been so lovingly described. This white gazebo with three steps leading up to it. A table, more like a pedestal, stands in the middle and on it open is a book oh not just any book definitely one that's been lovingly created and crafted wonderful paper for writing on and next to it of course the perfect pen And I can easily imagine that in this wonderful book, this journal that sits inside of this gazebo that seems, well, that's a secret. Inside of this gazebo, on this pedestal table, the book that is open, the pen that is there, I can easily imagine visiting and seeing these inscriptions. Finding poetry, finding notes, finding drawings, perhaps even finding pictures that have been taped into the book, maybe even blueprints for that wonderful canal boat. Can you see it? Can you see this white gazebo surrounded by these gorgeous gardens, this gazebo with the path leading straight to it in three steps up, table, book, pen. Yes, of course you can see it. And as you flip through and look at the pages, do you find any of your writings there? Do you find any of your pictures taped to the pages? Perhaps it's one of those things that instead of the picture of you in your everyday life, did you decide instead to give me a picture of you from my headspace? If you have, what freedom it is for you and I to meet here in my imagination where I welcome you in. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the everyday you. Of course there isn't. But there's also nothing wrong with choosing the headspace version of you and including that picture here in the book. The different pages, the profiles, the lists of likes and dislikes and favorite terms of endearment to use for your owner. Let's flip through this book a little bit more. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, for this one, 
For this one, I think our gazebo has decided that it would like to be something bit different. The humble yet ornate, gorgeous gazebo has decided that it will be only for this one. A type of temple and oracle set. I mean, it's only fitting. Because it's the Rex of the priestess that's decided to write in the book on this page. Priestess? No. No. Goddess. Under a starry sky, he wanders through a field of tulips, catching the faintest whiff of that sweet nectar, unaware that he is being spied upon by his empress. In the shadows where moonlight never touches, their fates intertwined like star-crossed lovers, as she steps from the shadows of the strand of willows. Upon hearing a soft sigh, he turns to the willows, the moonlight heavy over the windswept tulips, the nighttime wind light between the gaze of lovers. He longs for the taste of her lips like nectar, her eyes glisten as soft moonlight touches the silk lace gown of his enchanting empress. He bows at the gaze of his glorious goddess, silence, but for the wind and the boughs of the willows, the hem of her silk lace gown he dare not touch his. The night breeze engulfing him in the fragrance of tulips, stirring a craving in him for the taste of her sweet nectar. So desperately wanting to come together as lovers. In his eyes she feels his fiery desire to be lovers as he lays prostrate at the feet of his goddess, enraptured at the sweet fragrance of her nectar. Her gown billowing in the wind as branches of willows she licks her lips soft as the petals of tulips. He anticipates both her firm and tender touches. He sighs quietly, softly as she playfully touches. Under the moonlight the two are bound as lovers. Disrobing him, he lies before her naked in the tulips standing over him as he declares her his goddess. The cool breeze rustling the leaves of the willows as reflections of moonlight glisten on the nectar. Her flower wet with drops of her sweet nectar, her legs spread as his hand glides up and touches. Her moans as enchanting as the wind through the willows, their minds, bodies, and soul entwined as lovers. His will, submissive, totally to his goddess, her on top while on his back in the field of tulips. The smell of sweet nectar, like from the field of tulips, he reaches out and touches his enchanting empress. And the moonlight under willows, meeting as impassioned lovers. And now, And now, our lovely temple oracle turns back into our somewhat humble gazebo. It's warmer now. And now, and now we turn the page. And here we find the writings from one that calls me queen. 
or mistress. I think that's only when he decides that perhaps I've used mistress ten times in a row, so maybe he should too. Oh, yes, this one. This is the one who sent not an image of what the rest of the world sees. This is the one who sent a picture. Pasted it here for me to see a picture of what he looks like in my headspace, this shared reality of ours. And for this one, I can see why it's written in the journal and you may find that you won't truly appreciate its meaning unless you see it written out as well. And because I'm reading it, even though it is a visual puzzle, I will tell you where each line stops. And we'll see what you can make of that. The hint is in the first word. Acrostic, all I, stop. Love to express, stop. Was that just stop? A slight hypnotic rhythm of stop. Your beautiful voice makes me stop. Surrender, stop. Deeply and let, stop. Everything stop, else move to its stop. Proper position for mistress. E R. Stop. Focusing is indeed part stop of my stop. Rightful choice, and I agree with stop, your stop. Overall conclusion, it feels so good to develop by stop using your voice in the background. And now we close the book. Walk away from the gazebo. The person sitting on the bench. The images of the cafe. little time spent listening, talking, not on anything really in particular, is it? It's just about my voice in your ears, your mind full of me, more time together. Together, time. Thank you.